Hello and thanks very much for joining me uh, for the final part of this donkey drawing. Uh, last time we were looking at his eyes, his ears and um, the top of his head and um, today I'm going to finish off his cheeks, come down the front of his face onto his muzzle and um, move on to his neck and actually get him finished um, and share some of the uh, stages uh, that the drawing went through along the way. Let's get started. So I'm just mapping out with a um, a raw number 10%, just like we did um, in the other areas. I'll just pull that up on my phone. There's going to be a, a bit around there. I've already taken some of the pencil lines back um, with the kneadable eraser. Going in with um, a warm grey fauna and obviously very uh, light pressure just to create these wispy bits down the side of the head. This is all wispy down the side down here. There is a, uh, there's a little bit there which is quite dark. And there's also some there that's quite dark. So I'll just pop those bits in. In with the burnt ochre again. Keeping the pressure light, trying to keep it um, light and soft. With a Van Dyke brown that comes around here. And in with the brownish um, beige again to just blend these uh, two colours together. That's quite dark up there. Holding my pencil quite far back again. I'm just going to bring this together a little bit with a Pablo beige. It just helps to blend these, these colours together. Paying attention to um, the direction of the, the fur. some burnt ochre down here. And a little bit of the dark sepia. Just add these uh, dark areas in. And this little dark bit here is just sort of representing, just like on the other side, uh, this, this cheekbone. So this is just the shadow of the, the cheekbone here. Um, so that's quite important to, um, to put in. So we're just building it up slowly, little bit by bit. Um, 
back to the raw room for 10% to so just blend this out here. I can see just a little bit of this colour on the end of the fur actually. So we're going to use it to blend out the end of the, the fur up here as well. Actually there's a little bit behind the eye there. I want to use a warm grey three just to blend this area here, just to blend this in and, and soften this down a little bit. And I can just see that, that this little dark bit here on the end of the eye, it just starts to come this way. Uh, obviously starting to give the uh, the shape of the, the fur that's coming over here. So I'm just going to make that, yeah, I've just made that to come out this way a little bit. So obviously the beauty of using the pastel mat is that I can just keep putting the pencils over the top of each other, whether that's light over dark, dark over light, and just keep blending it um, on the page. with the raw rumba to just blend that there. I want to use some of the dark flesh uh, from the luminance range. It's dark flesh, dark flesh 40% and just use it to blend some of this um, this orange colour into this darker area down here. A little bit of the Van Dyke brown just to warm up that sepia. And then with the beige down here, this is quite a... I've put some terracotta in but actually it's a bit more beige so I'm just going to go over with the, the brownish beige and blend. So I'm just taking a warm grey one to just blend these um, areas in together. There's not an awful lot of detail um, down here. It's quite fuzzy. So I just want to blend things um, together a little bit. And then I'm just taking my paintbrush again and just blending it together. I don't want to press too hard with the paintbrush um, or it's quite likely that I'll just rub the, the pigment away. Um, so just light pressure with it and it just starts to uh, blend some of the pigment together and then with a, uh, a slice tool as well just start to put in some of these extra little bits of detail
to the raw rumba to plot out this next part. Coming down the top of the front of the head. And I'm not using any new techniques um, that we haven't used on um, other parts of the donkey. So as I said before, the the fur of the, the donkey on the donkey's head, it does change um, quite a lot. So it, it does sort of go off in all different directions. Um, so paying attention to the reference photograph and making sure that um, I get the direction of the fur going in the right direction um, so that it adds to the overall look of the donkey and makes the donkey look real um, when, when the portrait's finally finished. So I'm just using a, a warm grey one and then um, a cold grey just in that little bit um, on top of the nose where the uh, sort of the, the hair, the fur starts coming out from, from that area. And then obviously back in with the, uh, the burnt ochre just to add the, um, the orange tone. And you can see um, the burnt ochre probably shows it quite nicely, actually. The, um, I'm using the lightest of touches, just letting the, the tooth of the paper just drag off um, whatever pigment it wants from the pencil. I'm using a bit of cinnamon down um, at the bottom um, of this, uh, this nose area where it starts to go into the light grey area because he, he does have some sort of pinky areas to him um, and the cinnamon was just a nice colour to, um, to put that pink bit in on the bottom of his um, or on the top of his nose. So as before, I'm just going backwards and forwards with the, the dark greys, um, just looking for those darker bits inside the fur, the bits that are actually sort of going down into the fur, the bits that are in shadow, um, looking to plot those in first and then blending them out with the lighter colours. And just making sure that the the fur direction comes over the top of his nose um, the way it should, because that's going to actually add to the uh, sort of the form of the donkey and, and will be the difference between whether the donkey looks um, real or not. At the end of the day, it will just help to get the proportions um, of the nose and the face in. And then obviously coming down the side of the cheek, the the um, the, the coat comes almost straight down, actually. Um, uh, and again, that's important um, to make sure that 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 fur is going in the right direction. And you find that um, plotting in these little dark bits that you can see that are going in with the dark grey, um, it, it, it changes the uh, the piece of paper 
from a flat white piece of paper to something with form quite quickly just plotting in those dark areas and already um you know the shape starts to form of the donkey and then it's just a case of taking the lighter colors uh particularly from the luminance and the pablos because they're great colors for blending and um you know blending those darker bits out and and just extending out those those areas until uh we've created the the effect of the fur on the side of the face I'm just using a little bit of the burnt umber um, to add a little bit of the brownie, um, the, still the dark area, still the shadows, um, just but the, perhaps more brown than the grey um, on the bottom of his um, brown area as it joins into the, the, the grey muzzle. Um, and the burnt umber works quite well at um, adding those little areas in. So once I've got some layers down, I take my paintbrush, it's just a dry paintbrush, um, not any particular paintbrush, just a, a cheap paintbrush, and um, start to, to blend out. Um, as you use the paintbrush, you will pick up uh, bits of pigment on the paintbrush. So every now and again, you might just have to uh, clean it off on a tissue um, to make sure you're going back into um, an area with a clean paintbrush. And that's that's particularly true if I was, for instance, going to start to blend out the muzzle, uh, which is obviously much lighter. Um, I would I would just transfer the dark pigment that I'd picked up um, from the top of the head. So just dabbing it off on a tissue um, every now and again. But I'm just you know sort of gently brushing the uh, the paintbrush over the uh, the surface of the paper and just letting it blend the um, the colours together. And then I can go back in again. Here I'm going back in with the dark sepia to just add in some of those darker bits again. Add those those darker layers that were already there but have been blended out. But of course now we've created a softer look to the overall. Um, uh, coat and it could be that I have to do this um, several times um, the the paintbrush or the cotton bud is a great way to um, blend on the pastel mat um, and you would put layers down when you've got enough layers down obviously it won't work unless you've got a good amount of pigment down or there's nothing to blend so you need to have you know some some pigment down there to start with um, but then it's a nice way to create um, and an easy way to create soft um a soft look to the portrait and then obviously you can go back in with the um the pencils to add the detail um or even some of the lighter pencils over the top again um but you've got that soft sort of blended uh base to um work your next sort of layer from
And after blending, I may actually go back in with quite a few layers of pencil again before I uh, perhaps blend again. Um, it's all the layers um, that really do give you that depth of um, colour and the contrast and, you know, in this case, depth of the, the coat. Um, you just can't get that with just one or two layers. Um, coloured pencil does require, not always, it depends um, obviously where you're working on a um, the portrait. You'll see when I come down onto the muzzle um, in a while that actually there's hardly anything there at all um, in terms of layers on the, the light grey bit. But, but certainly um, in certain areas, um, you you will get um, a good result by adding the layers which will create the depth. And you can see here again, I've already put down more layers. We've already blended once. I've added more layers and I'm going back in with the uh, paintbrush um, again to blend it again. Using the paintbrush here rather than the cotton bud. I know we've used the cotton bud in certain areas. Um, the cotton bud gives a bit more of a harsh uh, finish and will sort of blend... Um, It'll give you a stronger blend, uh, if, if that makes sense. Um, and I don't necessarily want that in that area there. I just want to soften out what's there. Sometimes I want to use the cotton bud for a stronger blend. Sometimes the paintbrush is fine. So moving down onto the uh, the muzzle, just taking the dark sepia and I'm just plotting in um, where the nostrils will be, paying particular attention to the reference photograph. But actually, as far as muzzles um, go, there really isn't much in this one. It's quite a simple, um, uh, you know, muzzle. There isn't too much detail. Don't have to worry too much about, um, you know, sort of changes of direction of um, skin. Um, so it's, it's quite an easy one and there's not really much there. And then just bringing the cold grey two um, over the top of that grey area to join the brown down towards the uh, the nostrils on the muzzle. Um, and as I said um, before, there isn't really much that's going to go into that little bit between the brown and the nostrils. Um, you don't always need to put lots of layers down. And this is one of those times where I wouldn't put lots of layers down because it just doesn't really need it. And just carrying that cold grey down to fill in that muzzle area as well um, between the, the nostrils and down to the lips. And just taking a dark sepia pencil and just plotting out the um, the areas um, of the lips and and any little bits again I'm looking for the darker areas again just to um, plot out and draw out the the muzzle I know there's not much there but I still need to pay attention to what is there um, because obviously the less there you know when, when there's less there um, what is there has got to be correct um, because there's not much room for error because there isn't much there to start with
still pressing on really lightly, um, using the um, just the tip of the pencil to gently drag over the page to add in, um, just looking for sort of um, blocks of colour at the minute that, you know, I know are, I'm sort of plotting in the right place. Um, and if I've made a mistake, because I've um, pressed on so lightly, I can adjust it if I need to. Even though I know that this muzzle is um, a dark area with very little detail, I still want to sort of build it up slowly. I still want to be able to get some tones um, and some contrast in there and, uh, you know, a bit of um, interest rather than just sort of colouring it in with one layer of dark colour. And you'll notice that my strokes have gone, um, certainly in areas, they've, they've gone much shorter now. Um, the, the hair on the muzzle of the donkey um, is obviously going to be much finer and shorter and a bit more sort of velvety. And um, I don't want the strokes to be as long as they were on the top of the head when I was looking for fluffy, uh, long fluffy fur. So I've uh, shortened my strokes. I'm just blending out that, that cold grey too that I've got down earlier. I'm just blending that out a little bit with a warm grey one um, just to uh, smooth and blend it. And a Pablo is really good for sort of bringing the, the brown areas and the, the grey areas together. I'm just darkening down those uh, nostrils with a dark sepia, especially on uh, the one side where I know it's going to be really sort of dark and also feathering it out um, so that it, it joins into the, uh, the muzzle. But inside those nostrils will be uh, really quite dark. I'm just plotting the um, the line around the side of the uh, face. Um, that's actually going to be quite dark. So I've drawn it in with a dark sepia um, because that's actually, um, that's going to be part of the neck. So that's all going to be in shadow. The neck's going to come right up to that. And it's going to be quite dark as well. Um, so I was able to just plot that in with a dark sepia pencil. And then again, just um, darkening down inside of that nostril. The muzzle area is, um, as I've said, it's quite dark and there's not much 
um, going on in there really in terms of detail, but I still want to um, make sure that I follow the contours of the um, the nose. So I'm not just colouring it in, 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 you know, one direction um, or not thinking about the direction. I'm still very much thinking about the direction. I want the even though it's it's all one color i still want it to to look like it's got some form and um for the for the marks to go sort of follow over the muzzle in the right direction So I've plotted the muzzle in with a darker grey and I'm just going in with a lighter grey to um, just to blend it out and add a little bit more depth. Like I say, even though there isn't much going on in that uh, muzzle area, I don't just want to fill it in with one colour. I still want there to be some interest and some dimension um, within that dark area. and blending it out into the, the lighter gray area. So for this, I um, haven't resharpened my pencils in a while. Um, they are what I would perhaps call semi-sharp. They're certainly not sharp. They're not blunt, um, but they're they're great for just allowing the paper to um, pull off what it needs at this stage because I want to keep it all soft um, and delicate. So I don't want sort of harsh, sharp pencil lines. So I'm just taking a cotton bud. I used the paintbrush up in the um, the brown coat area. Um, I want to blend this out and give this um, a bit more of a of a blended look. Um, so I'm using the cotton bud to just sort of drag around the the area over the um, the light area and down into the muzzle and just let um, that fill in a little bit of the tooth of the paper and blend the pigment out to give me a base um, to start again. And you can see here, um, the camera picks this up quite nicely. You can see the difference, uh, how much you can really see the area blended with the cotton bud uh, compared to the area that with the paintbrush was on um, earlier. Didn't quite show up quite so, so much, the blended area. Even though it was, it was blended, um, you can see how sort of a, a much sort of harsher uh, blend takes place with the cotton bud. And every time I make the muzzle um, darker, um, the darker areas might need to go even darker still. So I'm going back into the nostril again to make sure I've got that contrast, to make sure the um, the the dark areas inside the mus uh, inside the nostril are um, darker. Um, and it may be that I have to do that again. You know, as the as the muzzle gets darker, it may be those nostrils have to get darker. So as you adjust one area. Um, 
you might have to go back and readjust something else. You can't just, um, well, I can't really just work on something in isolation. Um, once I've put down a colour, when I change a colour next to it, I'll just have to go back and just check that that original area, in this case, the nostrils, um, still look right compared to that new colour that's been put down next to it.
So moving on to the, um, the neck, I'm just taking a burnt umber and just um, starting to plot in the dark area that's going to come um, effectively the, the donkey's cross, the one side of that that comes down the, um, the side of his shoulder. Um, so just plotting that in and then again taking the mid-tone grey just like we've done for the fur on the other parts of the head. Um, I'm looking for those dark areas and starting to plot those um, dark areas in. not paying um i'm not, not worried if the the marks are a bit scribbly um as long as they're going in the right direction um i do actually have the donkey tilted a little bit on the um the board well the donkey's not actually tilted i've got the camera to one side which makes it look like he's tilted um so it, that, that might look a little bit strange as to why he's got his head um, sort of facing off to the bottom left hand corner. But he, he is straight on my board and I'm just using, uh, you know, rough strokes, taking the dark colours to plot in the, the darker areas and then blending out with the, the lighter areas, just as we've done with every other part of his um, his coat. And it's just a case of going backwards and forwards with all the layers, um, no new techniques. Uh, the techniques are exactly the same in this area as um, for the other areas, um, particularly the, the top of the head and, you know, the, the nose and coming down the side of the cheeks. Um, just going from uh, the dark to the mid-tones, um, blending out, um, adding some layers down and then um, blending with either the paintbrush or the, um, the cotton bud. Um, and then, you know, perhaps starting again with some more layers, depending on whether that's, that's needed or not. The cotton bud, I've used the cotton bud quite a lot on the neck because again, it does give quite a nice blended uh, look and um, gives more of a blended look than the paintbrush. So I've gone in with the cotton bud um, to really sort of soften it down. I don't, there isn't too much, I don't want too much detail in the neck because obviously I want the focus to be on the head and around the eye and the um the, the top of the head area so the the neck is going to be you know so slightly toned down in terms of focus um and the cotton bud obviously helps with that because it helps to blend it out making sure that i've got the contrast under the um under the muzzle where it comes down onto um his neck and his um shoulder and coming down directly under the muzzle sort of coming down onto his chest I do want that to be nice and dark to create the contrast. And you'll notice that sometimes I pull the pencil down and then sometimes I push the pencil up. Um, and that goes back to what I said, I think it was on the ear part, where you will always have the um, the wispy part of your pencil stroke as your pencil comes off the page. And the blunt part of the pencil will be, uh, the blunt part of the pencil stroke will be where your pencil first goes down onto the page. So sometimes I pull the pencil down because I want the wispy bit to be at the bottom and sometimes I push the pencil up because I want the uh, the wispy bit um, to be at the top of the stroke and that then gives the impression of sort of fur coming um, down but also pushing the dark bits of the fur up under the lighter coat if that makes sense.
So I'm just using all the colours that we've used um, in the uh, previous parts on the rest of the donkey, um, you know, going through the creams, the sort of rusty colours, the browns, uh, the dark browns and the, you know, the ranges of greys um, and just looking for those dark areas initially, those shadow bits, those bits that would be sort of right into under the fur and then just start expanding them out um, expanding them out with the lighter colors uh, building it a little bit at a time um, just like a little puzzle putting all those little uh, light and dark areas together and eventually we'll create the um, the fur on the neck of the donkey And you can see here that I'm, I'm blending with the cotton, but again, just like I said um, it, on the other parts, it, on the head and in other areas of the donkey, I will probably, um, in fact I do, I blend and then create more layers and then blend again. And I do that several times and that is how I can get that sort of depth to the coat. Um, you do have to be careful this is probably for another video actually um i think i'll i'll do a video on on blending out um you do have to be careful because first of all you can either rub all the pigment off and we don't want to do that or if you blend too much you can sometimes make your work look flat um so there is a fine line between blending it enough and then making it look flat um or rubbing it away completely um so yeah it, it does take a little bit of practice um to use the um the cotton bud or the um the uh, the paintbrush um but if you can if that's a look that you like uh, you like that softened look and as I say it works great on um pastel mat um you know they're, they're a great little tool to have in your toolbox um but yeah, there is a fine line between blending it enough and then making your work look flat. Um, and we obviously don't want the latter. And one way around that to stop it looking flat is uh, firstly, obviously just using the paintbrush or the cotton bud just enough. But secondly, uh, sort of don't necessarily leave it at that blended stage. So I wouldn't um, usually, certainly not on this portrait, I wouldn't leave that blended stage after I've used the cotton bud as the top layer. I would then go back in and put some, um, you know, some other pencil back in. And then I'm just going back on this um, this little stripe that's coming down the side of his shoulder, which forms the one side of uh, the cross on his back. Um, just going back in with the uh, the burnt um, umber um, to make it look quite strong, give it quite a strong brown look. And then just using the brown beige to to blend that out. I don't re I didn't really want the portrait to just end at that stripe because that's quite a harsh line. So I've just made sure that I've blended it out with a little bit more of the the one of the core colours to just just blend it out a little bit. I just didn't want the portrait to end on a um, that harsh stripe. Even though that harsh stripe's there, I just thought it would look more visually pleasing if it was just blended out a little bit rather than just sort of coming to a, a definite stop. And then just making sure that I have uh, the area dark under his, um, his muzzle and just darkening down areas to create that sort of long fluffy coat. And then the Derwent Light Flash Flesh, uh, flesh Pink, the Derwent Light Fast Pencils, um, they're great in their own right, but they're also very, very good at blending um, other colours together. And this Flesh Pink, I don't think the camera is really picking it up that, that well, but it was just the perfect pink that I needed to blend some of these colours together to sort of, you know, fill in that grain, um, but also just give that little pink um, tone that I wanted. 
and then once again uh, back in with the um, the cotton bud just to, to blend out some areas and then I'm taking the slice tool and just like before I'm pressing on really lightly and I'm just starting to put in a few of those stray little whiskers um, not pressing on hard not damaging the paper not using the uh, not using it as you would a knife I'm sort of using the side of the blade and just letting it um, scratch out a little bit of uh, pigment to create some of these um, these whiskers. And it works, the, the slice tool works beautifully on the pastel mat, whereas uh, if you've seen my other videos on the uh, watercolour paper, um, I've said, you know, we need to have the base layers down, you need to have that light, ba light base layer down for the slice tool to work. But on the pastel mat, you don't need to do that. Um, the pastel mat um, will, will work even without going through that process of those base layers that we need um, and that I've demonstrated on the watercolour paper. And then I'm just taking a very sharp, dark pencil and very, very gently, really not pressing on at all, very gently just starting to draw in some of these whiskers and the, the little uh, sort of pores that you can see at the base. Um, the hair follicles at the base of the whiskers really pressing on lightly I really don't want this to sort of take over the whole um, portrait I just want a suggestion this donkey on the reference photograph you'll see that he did actually have an awful lot of um, whiskers which are beautiful but I didn't want to put them all in um, I didn't want it to sort of take over um, the whole area and just keeping the um, the pencil strokes really really light uh, usually I have to say I wouldn't use a black I just couldn't find my um, um, my pencil that I would normally use I'd normally use either a Payne's grey or a cold grey six or even five um, even a warm grey six or five but I wouldn't normally use the black but I was very careful to um, not press on hard um, just because I had it to hand and I didn't have my um, my other pencils um, there that I would normally use but yeah I would normally use either Payne's grey um a cold grey um use sort of four five or six and a warm grey four five or six but still pressing on very lightly and by this time now the you know the neck we're pretty much there um it's just a case of darkening down bits that I want to darken down as I said to you um, before, when I um, change something, when I adjust a colour, I'll always go back and just make sure that the colours are around it are still as dark or as light as they need to be to make sure I've got that, you know, the highlights and the shadows um, and the contrast, sorry, um, correct. So at this stage now, all I'm really doing is just going around the portrait um, whilst I've got a colour pencil in my hand, just looking to see where I might need it. Um, and then, you know, picking up another pencil and, and just having a look around the whole portrait, actually, the eyes, the ears, anywhere else that I think I might need that colour. Um, just to give one final check that I'm happy that it's blended, that, you know, I can just see just enough grain of the paper, but no more than I want to see and no less. And, you know, that it looks blended and um, yeah, the, 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 the di dimensions there. And that's about it. So thank you very much for joining me. I hope you've liked this little uh, series of um, donkey um, drawings and just sort of seeing some of my processes as I go through drawing him. Um, if you have liked the uh, videos, please do think about giving me a thumbs up and uh, subscribing. If you have any questions, then feel free to put them in the comments. Or if you've just got any comments, then uh, feel free to uh, put them down below. And I do try to come back to everybody as soon as I can. Um, otherwise, um, thanks very much. And I'll see you in another video. Thanks. Bye bye.